Hey friends, Garden Jen here. Today we're going to be doing part one of our fermentation series. We are going to be making water kefir or kefir, however you choose to pronounce it. Kefir is full of lots of probiotics, a lot more probiotics than you can get in a container of yogurt. So come on over with me to the kitchen and let's get fermenting. Okay, so let's get started making some water kefir. And some pro people pronounce it kefir, so I guess it just depends on where you're at. Kind of like Caribbean and Caribbean, potato, potato. Um, but anyway, kefir or kefir, that's what we're doing today. And like I said, I am doing water kefir uh, because I don't do dairy. And so I can get the same probiotics using uh, sugar water um, instead of um, dairy. So uh, this has a batch that I uh, just got done today. And this is kind of what it looks like. And then when you bottle it and put it in the fridge, that's what it looks like. Um, these bottles are special bottles that are used in beer making and soda making and things because they have the caps. They have the, the caps on them that um, you can close and it helps keep the fermentation inside and things. These are great for making kombucha as well and um, just a great investment if you plan on doing any type of fermentation. Um, these work really well. So I have three, uh, or I mean, excuse me, I have six cups of water in this jar. When you usually, when you start making kefir, when you get your grains, uh, the grains that you get will um, make about a quart jar. And then um, when you keep doing it, your grains are going to grow, they're going to multiply, they're going to be happy if you follow the steps of making the kefir properly. They're going to be really happy and they're going to grow. And eventually you're going to need either a bigger container or to divide your, your kefir and um, share it with friends or do you know smaller jars. A bit, multiple smaller jars um, so you can continue to use them. You don't want to throw them out um, if, if you can help it because they're a great thing to have. If you want to though you can add them to your garden if you have way too many and the probiotic, probiotics in the kefir grains will definitely help your garden out. So I'm going to show you what we're going to do. This is, like I said, I've had this batch um, sitting for about two days. Two days works really good around here. And so I'm just going to show you how we're going to go from this step to making another batch. And um, I prefer to order uh, live grains, ones that haven't been dehydrated. They just seem to start off a lot better than those dehydrated ones. And I got my grains from Amazon, as well as the, the bottles to put them in, uh, and things like that. And I'll leave the links uh, in the description box below where you can get them. So... I'm going to strain off this batch into my pitcher. This is an old pitcher. And we have very hard water here, which is why my pitcher's discolored. And we make tea. So it's not dirty, it's just stained from all the usage it gets. So I'm going to use a metal mesh strainer, fine mesh strainer. Uh, some people say don't use metal because it'll kill the kefir grains. But um, I don't leave them in here. I just quickly drain them and then uh, put them into my new container right away. So. And I've done this uh, enough times where I'm confident that using the metal strainer, as long as I don't keep my grains in here, it'll be just fine. So we're going to go ahead and strain this. Alright. And just to show you here, let me make sure the camera can pick it up. Those are what kefir grains look like. They look like kind of jelly crystals. They're kind of interesting. And so um, I'm going to set these, dump these out into my plastic bowl here. Like I said, I don't leave them in the strainer long. Just enough to get it strained out. If you have a plastic strainer, you really don't have to worry about damaging your kefir. Okay. And so there's our kefir that we had made. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to do a second fermentation on that 
And I'll show you what that is before I show you how we're making the new ones, just so I can get this out of the way. So we're going to take our bottles here. And I have some juice that I just made. This is freshly made juice using a juicer. You can see it's kind of foamy. Um, but I'm going to pour a little bit into the bottom of my bottles here. About that much. And what this is going to do is this is going to give the grains some, th some more sugar to feed on and do a second fermentation. Try to get more of the juice and not the fuzz in there. because um, the grains have basically already eaten all the sugar that was in the water. So now they need some more sugar to keep on working. And we're just gonna add our kefir to the bottle. Because I'm using apple juice, it's going to kind of taste almost like an um, apple cider when it's done. Alright, so we're done with all those now. Move those out of the way. Alright, and so we'll just put the caps back on these, seal them down, and we're going to set them on the counter and let them set for another 24 hours. And this mixture is going to get awful bubbly and soda-like. Um, you're going to want to uh, burp your containers about every five, six hours because this is going to build up a lot of pressure. And if you don't release that pressure, this will actually explode. So that's how you do a second fermentation on this really easy. All right, let me get this moved out of the way and I'll show you how we started in the beginning. All right, to start off, you're going to need your water. And it's highly recommended not to use tap water, especially if you're in an area where there's chlorine that they use to try to uh, make their water safer. I have well water, so um, I do use that. But um, if you can get uh, bottled water, the kind that you want to get is spring water, because the spring water still has all the minerals and things in it that the, that the kefir grains actually need. They need a well-balanced diet, so to speak. So they um, to get distilled, water which takes out all the minerals is not good for the kefir because there's no minerals for them to feed off of. So get spring water if you're going to use bottled water or if you have well water that doesn't have chlorine in it you can go ahead and use that. So because my kefir grains have gotten bigger they've multiplied I've gone up to um, six cups. Uh, batch starts with four cups and for every four cups of water you want a quarter cup of sugar and I use uh, organic cane sugar and then um, every once in a while um, unless you're using like Sucanat or Demira which has all the nutrients in it um, you're going to want to add a little bit of molasses um, to your sugar because the molasses has extra nutrients in it and so for about um, I make my own brown sugar too because uh, brown sugar is basically your cane sugar with the molasses removed. So if you just put molasses back in it, you have your brown sugar again. So for every cup of regular cane sugar, you add about a tablespoon of molasses. So, um, so yeah, this is uh, just just shy of half a cup of sugar because again, I only have six cups, not a full eight cups. So um, I'm gonna put this in my jar here. And then I'm going to put the top on it and we're going to shake this up really good. So let me grab my top here. And my my water is uh, between um, 65 and 75 degrees, 
just enough where it can melt that sugar. You don't want it too hot because that will kill your grains. Too cold and your grains are just going to sleep on you. So um, the magic number, so to speak, is between 65 and 85 degrees. But I try not to get any too much warmer than 80 degrees or so. <clears throat> Alright, so there's some really dark sugar water. But the kefir is going to love this. So next we just add our kefir grains to it. I kind of overkilled on my bowl here, but I want a bowl that could fit everything in, so just add those to it. Alright, just like that. And then what um, I do is I use a coffee filter. And this is an unbleached coffee filter. Um, we don't use the bleach kind around here. We try to limit how many chemicals we actually use. So, and I reuse them as long as they don't get uh, ripped or anything between my batches. Because I also use this for my uh, kombucha as well. Um, I just reuse them. Uh, no sense in throwing them away because they're perfectly fine. So you just take your, um, your whatever you're going to use to cover this, whether it's... Um, coffee filters. Some people use cheesecloth. Some people use a piece of muslin fabric. It has to be able to breathe, but you want to keep the fruit flies and, and mold and things from getting in here. So you need to cover it, and then you just put a rubber band around it. Like so. And then you're going to let this sit on your counter from anywhere between 12 and 72 hours. Um, the sweet spot for me, so to speak, is uh, around 36 hours. That's um, the flavor that I like. And uh, kefir starts out as sugar water, but when it's done, it's not, there's not a lot of sugar left because that's what the, the kefir grains eat. So um, it's not going to be as sweet. It should take on kind of a, I don't want to say vinegary, that's kind of more like kombucha, but um, it's going to take a, on a slightly tang flavor, I guess is the best way to put it. And that's when you know it's, it's ready. So again, I'm going to let this sit for approximately uh, 36 hours for me. And then I'm going to uh, just repeat the process that I just showed you to make a brand new batch. So I'll be back here uh, to show you what the, um, the second fermentation looks like, and we'll go from there. So see you soon. All right, so we're back. Um, this is the... Uh, kefir that's been fermented with the freshly made apple juice. You can see it's got um, some of the apple sediment here, um, but it's pretty good. Um, it tastes kind of like the sparkling apple cider you get in the store with a little bit more of a punch to it. So I'm going to open the container and just pour a little bit. And it's got a little bit of fizz, not much anymore because We've been drinking this a lot, so there's only a little bit left, but um, it's really good, and you don't have to do this when you make your kefir. You can just do the fir first fermentation and put it in the fridge, but um, if you want to kick it up a notch, flavor it with some juice, let it ferment again uh, for the next 12 hours. Uh, again, making sure you burp, burp the bottle. Um, 12 to 24 hours, burping the bottle every um, 6 hours or so, so you don't uh, break the bottle. So that's that for the uh, kefir. Uh, the next video I will do, I will be showing you guys how we make kombucha. And this is basically a fermented tea. Um, this one is made with uh, rooibos tea, red rooibos herbal tea. Um, the batch that I have going currently is with black tea. So you can use a, a plethora of different teas uh, that you have available. But that will be shown on my next video. So stay tuned for the next installment of Fermentation Foods. Thank you for watching everybody. Bye bye.